Welcome to World Crowd Logistics TV. My name is Jimmy Tran, and today we're going to go over the process of how to export car from the port of Long Beach. I have been doing this for 15 years already, so I hope this video will help you. So what do we do here? We uh, store your car at our warehouse, we do custom clearance, and we also have an option to ship your cargo for you by ocean or by air. So a lot of people wonder how we're going to fit this car into the container. So for a car to fit inside the container, it just fit perfectly. For a car to fit into the container, we have drive ramp for the car to drive into the container. Step number one, picking a warehouse, fate folder, or a loading facility to load your car, you need to ask them a question. You need to ask them if they're able to store your car. So we have two options. You either store your car in a secure yard, their secure yard, or you ask them to store your luxury uh, sport car or million dollar car in a warehouse, like our warehouse. It's a closed, secure warehouse. The reason is because for car export, it, it doesn't come to the warehouse and get loaded right away. It always needs to be stored while waiting for a container to get to the warehouse and a team to put the car inside. Step number two, to export your car, you will need an MSO. You get the MSO from the dealership. It's approved that you purchased the car. And if you don't have an MSO, the second option is a title. So a title is, normally a title is used, right? To export, the title pretty much say who's the ownership of the car and US Customs need to confirm the ownership, the shipper, which is uh, you and then the title will have your company name on it. So now there's proof that you are the owner for them to validate it. So a little bit tricky thing with the title, sometimes some title will have a lien on it. What is a lien? A lien is when you borrow money from a bank and a bank finance that car for you. So there's gonna be the bank lien on it. In order for the title to be validated, if there's a lien on it, you need a, uh, um, a note or a document from the bank saying that the, the title has been paid off and then there's no lien on the car. And then the second one is the bill of sale. So the bill of sale is proof of transfer, right? So let's just say customer A sold to customer B and then customer B is the exporter. So the bill of sale is needed. Sometimes US Customs get a bit um, picky and they might ask for a wire transfer. Like for example, if you're gonna do a car that's worth like easily over $100,000 and US Custom going to ask proof of wire transfer. Like if you're gonna buy um, a Lamborghini, for example, that's $600,000 or might be more now, right? Um, the, the US Custom is gonna require that you show proof of transfer of wire transfer to the Lambo, uh, Lamborghini dealership as your uh, confirmation. Step number three. Step number three is the mode of transportation. Now that you have your car, you have the warehouse, you have the uh, document to export the car, you need to decide how do you want to ship your car to your client. I would say 99% of the time, cars are being shipped in uh, containers. So a container which is going by ocean. Ocean mean that uh, there's a 20 foot container, a 40 foot container, and a 45 foot containers, right? A 20 foot container usually hold one car, a 40 foot container will hold two cars, and then you start to use 45 foot containers is when you start to load big cars, like, uh, uh, like the, the truck that just drove past me uh, earlier in the video. That truck, if it's a long bed, which means that if you put two of those trucks inside a container, then you will need a 45 foot container to put those trucks inside because they are longer. But all car will fit perfectly inside the container and you just drive it slowly in. And then um, other than um, ocean, you could use air to ship your cargo. So what's the difference between ocean and air? Um, let's just say if, uh, I'm just gonna give a general price. So a general price to ship a car to Asia, for example, from the port of Long Beach, is roughly about $3,000 right now. Uh, the reason why I say roughly about $3,000 right now is because uh, there is gasoline price is currently at uh, $6.20 a gallon. By the time you watch this video, gasoline might be at a different price. 
And so price, the market price do go up and down based on the price of gasoline and the demand of the market. So currently right now, the price to ship uh, one car or one container to Asia is roughly about $3,000. I say Asia mean that in general because you know the port of um, Taiwan, Shanghai and everything else might be different. It might even be lower like for example to ship a car to Hong Kong it's not going to be $3,000 because Hong Kong is a very popular port it's going to be way lower right. So one car two cars can be different right. Uh, Hong Kong should be like in the $2,000 or even less. Okay so uh, a car shipping to Asia could take about 18 days to 30 days again depend if, uh, depend on different ports that you want to ship it to right um, and then if your client or if your buyer or if you're the buyer and you want the car earlier we have the option to ship your car by air so air uh, ship your car by air it's it, it char the airline charge your car based on the volume it take up and sometimes by the weight so the, the the minimum weight they charge a car is roughly about 5,000 kilo to ship a car by air you Give or take, you're looking at about like $12,000 to $15,000, depending on where you're going. But you know, again, it's the estimate right now based on the few that we, uh, the gas price that we have right now, there, there is a conflict uh, in the world as, I make the, as I'm, I'm making this video and gas price is at its all time high at $6.50 a gallon, right? So by air, usually take about maybe one or two days to get to Hong Kong. And then if it's going to like uh, Vietnam, for example, or Thailand, for example, it usually take about maybe four or five days because the car need to stop in Hong Kong, transfer onto a cargo flight, and then it will get, uh, uh, take a second leg to, or the final flight to Vietnam or to uh, uh, Thailand. Now that I have completed the process and the documentation side of exporting a car, I'm gonna go into the physical labor of loading a car. So our staff that load all your cars, they need to dress in um, sweats and shirts with no button. The reason why we don't allow any button or any metal for the staff to wear uh, on their clothes is that because when they load a car, we don't want any chance for our staff to scratch your car when they, because when you load a car, there's a lot of tight space. All the cars that we load here, majority of them are over $50,000. Uh, the average price range is roughly in the $100,000. So definitely we don't want any scratch. We, we, want, we want our client car to be protected. Now let's go through the containers and shoot a video how the car is being loaded. Now the physical side of things. So now that we have two cars inside the containers, uh, this is two cars into a 40 foot containers. Before we put the car in, we need to drain the gas to one fourth a quarter or 25% below to make sure the car is not uh, considered dangerous good, right? Once the car is inside, we disconnect the battery and then we strap down the car. So as you can see, there's two orange straps. The two orange straps is crisscross. We double the orange strap to make sure that it's more secure. Other warehouse, they might do one, but for us, we do two. We crisscross the strap and then we also put uh, block and brace wood uh, on all four tires. We also crisscross in the front as well. And this strap, they're very strong. You could literally stand on them. Um, the, the point of the strap is to make sure that the, your car is secure. So as you can see, it's very tight space for anyone to walk through. Because the space is so tight that the loader cannot go uh, on the side of the car, what we do is that we roll down the passenger side and the driver's side window. And once the finish uh, is completed, the loader would go through the windows, uh, out the trunk, and then exit the car and then they close the trunk. So due to the limit of space, as you can see on the side right here, that, you know, it's almost impossible for a normal person to fit through. What we do is that we open the driver and the passenger windows, and then we uh, open the trunk. So when a person needs to low or strap or tie down, whatever that's needed in the front, uh, the loader would go through the back windows, the back of the trunk, go through and to the side of the door. And to the front of the car. Now that we're inside the container of the first car that we loaded because we crawled through the first car, 
As you can see, the sp spacing here is very tight. I cannot really hold the camera because the camera have metal parts and I don't want it to scratch any one car. So you pretty much have to just go through the car. Uh, small size, I guess. Uh, I'm roughly about 150 pounds. So they have to fit through the car. Uh, again, the reason why we don't allow our staff or our loader to wear a button or many clothes is because this is the reason. When they do this right here, this is the number one reason why car is being scratched is because the staff are walking through with jeans and um, a metal zipper. So this is why I wear this clothes today. So earlier, I showed you the option of um, going through the car and lowering the car, going to the back of the trunk is because, you know, uh, we have different lower uh, loader with different body size. But uh, for loader that little um, skinny, on the skinny side, you could just, you know, go through the car on the side. And then if we have car that's like Rolls Royce or any SUV, uh, Lincoln Black Label, of course you cannot go to the side like what I'm doing right now. It's pretty big, so you just have to go through the trunk uh, and then through the um, driver or passenger window. But for this car right here, it's a pretty, uh, it's a crossover SUV, so I could easily just fit to the side on the side of the car. That's the physical process of loading the car. So now that we're all done, we're gonna close the trunk. Remember, the battery is disconnected. So make sure before you close this trunk, you need to roll down the passenger and the driver window. If you don't roll it down and you close this, when it gets to destination, you have to break the window to get into the car because there's no way to open the car. So we're gonna physically close the trunk. Okay. This is for car that's being stored outside. Our car could be drive directly into our warehouse from outside. That is the process of auto exporting. So why do clients choose us? Number one, we have our own warehouse. This is our warehouse. We could store your car outside or we could store your car inside. Uh, we also the one that's doing your loading, like I showed you earlier, the process of the loading. We also the one that's doing the loading for you. Um, and then finally, for the container to be pulled empty to our warehouse and returned back to port, because car loading and car exportation is so time sensitive, we also have our own world-craft logistic tri drivers and not like other fate forwarder out there. So this is why in the last 15 years, our client, we actually have client that been around with us for the last 15 years and does not leave us because we complete the whole supply chain for them. We ship from, you know, just simple Corollas all the way to million dollar car Bugatti. So we do a lot here at World Crowd Logistic. And if you have any question and you want to pay us a visit or you want us to do a car export for you, uh, please contact me or visit our facility. Thank you very much for watching.